Hi guys, so our old friend James Not So Cleverly appeared before the Home Affairs Committee a few days ago where he was challenged on the backlog in asylum claims. The Home Secretary didn't like the use of the language used by the Chair, well frankly it paints a picture of reality and this isn't what his government is seeking. Now before he took over, the former Home Secretary Suella Braveman and her Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick believed bringing down the backlog would work against the idea of deterrence. It made zero sense, but we're talking about the far right of the Conservative Party here. What Cleverly is doing, it seems, is not actually deal with the problem, but instead cook the books. Have a listen to this. Okay, J- just on this 33,085, they are part of the flow backlog, or are they a separate backlog? Separate backlog. <laughs> they are part of the 94,000 asylum caseload. You're, you're keeping them all together in one flow backlog, even though this 33,000 actually, at the moment, we think can't, apply, can't so apply they are for counted asylum. in our total caseload of work that is in our system. Right, so 94,000 is the current backlog. It's the caseload. The caseload. Case 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 okay, so that's different from the backlog because... It's not, it's not, it, I mean, these are the cases that we're working on, we're working through uh, at the moment. The backlog was... Uh, the backlog was uh, specific, so at the time of the change of legislation, there were a number of outstanding cases. We committed to give an initial decision uh, on those, and with the exception of the small number, which I know the committee has uh, commented upon. Well, that's the legacy backlog. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, so we put that to one side because you say you've completed that. I know there are some concerns that that isn't the case, but you say they've done that. Yeah. But you've still got a backlog of claims post. June 2022. So that is now at 94,000. Is that what you're saying to me? That's the, the backlog of asylum claims you are working through. The load is 94,062. 94,062. And that includes claims since the Illegal Migration Act. Right. So that's the total number now of who is in the backlog, but we've yeah. recognised from... Back- I'm sorry, you keep describing it as a backlog. <laughs> but it's not a backlog. I'm sorry, I don't understand so why it, it's, it's not it's a backlog. The, it's the case... It's the case that, I mean, you Why is it not a backlog? Because you haven't dealt with them and people are waiting. Why is that not a backlog? Well, it's a queue. It's, oh, it's a, a queue. Process. No, the point is, okay. the, the point is, the point is, you you can apply. Uh, I mean, if, I think your use of the word backlog implies something that I disagree with, and that's why I, I highlight the point. There is a there are a number of cases that we are that we are working through. At any given time, a new. Someone who has arrived yeah. will be added to the to the to the to the caseload to the caseload. Yeah. By your definition, if someone arrived yesterday, yeah. that would be a backlog, yeah. and I I don't agree with that as a as a as a definition. So the phrase that that we use, and obviously the committee is at liberty to use whatever you know descriptor you wish to use. But that is our caseload that we are that we are working through. Right. So um, when do you think you'll get to the point where somebody arriving today? will have their claim dealt with within the six months that you used to do in the Home Office. You used to process claims within six months. So uh, this 94,062 Q backlog caseload, mm-hmm. when are you going to get to the point where you're dealing with things quickly and you're not, we're not going to have to talk about backlogs? Well, the, I mean, what we saw last year because of uh, an increase in the number no, of people... I don't understand that. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I'm just conscious other people have got questions. I just want yeah. to know, have you got a date in your mind when you will have... Impossi- no, it's, it, it's impossible to give... It's impossible to give... Oh my goodness, what an absolute farce. Okay, so we've heard about backlogs, we've heard about flow backlogs, we've heard about the legacy backlog, we've heard about the caseload, and we've heard about a queue. What is the meaning of this? What is the point of all of this? It's about distracting the public. It's about cooking the books. Well, there isn't really a backlog, or we've reduced the backlog, because we've moved people out of the backlog into the legacy backlog, or we've moved people uh, from the caseload into the flow backlog. or we've. This is all just an attempt to, as I say, cook the books, to manipulate the figures, to make it look better than it really is. Now, we have to wind our minds back a little bit to last year, where the immigration minister at the time, Robert Jenerick, said, well, if we actually reduce the backlog, I don't know if it was on in the media or if it was in one of these committees, but he said, we have to redu- if we reduce the backlog, we remove the deterrent. Now, that made no sense whatsoever at the time, still doesn't make any sense, but it seems that the policy at the time was just let the backlog build up and that will be a deterrent. How would that be a deterrent? The, the deterrent is, 
Well, if you arrive in the United Kingdom, you'll be stuck in a hotel for years and that will be deterrent to stop people from coming to the United Kingdom. Instead of actually processing the claims and being able to decide whether people should stay in the country or not, and if they can't, they will be deported. That would be a better deterrent, no? There's a chance that you're going to be processed and if, you're, if your claim is not valid, you will be removed. Now, James Cleverly, instead of actually investing the resources necessary to bring down the backlog, now, I think it's probably impossible to bring down the backlog before the general election. So they were looked at it and said, look, we can't achieve this. So what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to rename <laughs> the backlog, rename it into, di we create different types of backlogs and then Rishi Sunak can claim, see, we've reduced the backlog because we've moved people from one into another. And the media, of course, will go along with it. It's pathetic. You know, there are people who have been waiting years for an asylum claim. Legitimate claims. But once again, if the claim is not, then you can deport them. But instead, once it, it, we always come back to this problem with the Conservative Party, and in particular, the last few Prime Ministers. They're not interested in actually fixing things. They're not actually interested in working hard to resolve problems. So they'll manipulate the figures, they'll offload responsibility onto somebody else and try and claim some sort of victory. We saw it also with Rishi Sunak when it came to inflation. When inflation was above 10%, nothing to do with him and his Tory government. When inflation is below 5%, yes, do a victory lap. It's all because of our plan. <sighs> Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.